Okay, hello and welcome again, everybody. Here we are, it's day three of Life Code Global. So if you came to day one and two, thank you very much. That was great. Here we go again. I'm back with Eleanor. It's kicking off as usual. Um, so a uh, couple of things before we get started. Um, I did send this around the email as well, but uh, due to popular request, we've now introduced a break in the schedule today. So 5.30 to 6 o'clock, there will be a break, which means that the flash talks are coming forward, uh, have been shortened by half an hour, and uh, Michael's session with databases and Kevin's session, uh, the monthly report, will be brought forward by half an hour. So don't forget to join for those. And um, if you haven't yet joined the Slack channel, then, as always, we have a Slack channel for you to join, which is appearing in your chat now, I hope. If you're here, can you just confirm that you can actually hear and see me? Can you type in the chat to say that you are you are here and that we are here and that it's all going as it should be? Um, just wait and see if we get some response on that. I can see people are joining, so we've definitely got some people here. Ah, yes. Hello, Jim. Hello, Brian. Welcome, Matthias. Good to see you all. Fantastic. Okay. That's great. Hello, David in Texas. Um, the Netherlands. And yes, good. Okay. Miami. Terrific. All right. So I know Eleanor has got a packed schedule for you today. Lots of things to teach you. You're going to be rating things, and uh, I'm going to hand it over to Eleanor, and she can get going. Okay, thanks, Heather. Um, so welcome back, everybody, to our beginners session. So in this one, we will be making an app called Rate It, which is a sort of um, personal movie diary and rating app. Um, so the main reason for doing this app is to um, teach you a bit about using databases with live code. So we're just going to use a small SQLite database. Um, it's fairly basic because it is a beginner's course. So we're just going to learn how to connect, add things, delete things, things like that. Um, I know that Michael has been doing a much more in-depth databases um, course as part of Live Code Global. So this is just a nice little taster. So I've got a few videos. Um, it turned out to be maybe slightly larger than I had initially planned. So we might not get through them all in the hour, but I know that they'll all be made available to you later so that you can watch them in your own time. And of course, there's the slides to go with it as well. Okay, so we'll just get started with the first video. Let me start that up now. So for this session, we'll be starting with a partially complete stack just to save us some time. You can download this from the resources that go with this session. And I've got it here on my desktop in a folder called Rate It. That's our rateit.livecode stack. So it's partially complete. We'll be finishing it off. But the first step we're going to take is to create our database. So we've chosen to use an SQLite database. So this is a local database. Um, so you don't need a server or any setup. It's um, fully compatible with live code and it works on desktop and mobile. So it's ideal for this case where we're just going to be storing the data that we want to use locally. We don't need to th share it with anybody. It's just for ourselves. So to set up the database, I'm going to use a tool called DB browser for SQLite. So this is a nice visual tool that lets you create, edit, add records, just let you work with your database. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you could create your database from scratch just using Live Code Script, but this is a slightly simpler way to do it just to see what's happening. So we're going to start by creating a new database. So we click on the new database button and we're going to call it rateit.db and we're going to save it in the rate it folder next to our stack. So if I save that, now what we want to do is we're going to create our table. Now, unfortunately in this lesson, I'm not really gonna go be able to go into a lot of detail about SQL and tables and things. We will talk about it a bit. Um, there's just not enough time. This is more about using 
SQLite databases with live code. There's loads of resources if you want to learn more about, um, about SQL in general. So our tables, our database is going to be very simple. We're just going to have one table to store information about films. So we'll call our table film. And then what we want to do is we want to add some fields. So we're going to have a few fields here just to store the information that we want about our film. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to add a field and we're going to call this one ID. Now we're going to give every record a unique uh, numerical ID to identify it. This just means that we don't have to worry about titles for films that are slightly the same or this just means that we don't have to worry about things like films with similar titles getting confusing or anything like that. We'll just have this unique numerical ID. So we want it to be an integer. Now there's some more options here that we're going to choose. So this is not null and you can see it um, down here in this window. It's um, building up the SQL code for actually creating this table. So we want it to be not null. We want all our films to have an ID. We want it to be a primary key. So that means it's a unique way of um, identifying a record in the table. So the primary key will be ID. You can see down there, primary key ID. We want it to auto increment. So this means that the database will actually take care of creating a new uh, numerical ID for every record that we add. It'll just add one each time. So it'll auto increment and we don't have to worry about that. And we also want it to be unique just to make sure that we don't end up with two IDs that are the same. So that's our first field is ID. Now the next field we're going to have, we're going to start um, putting in the fields that we're going to actually use to store the film information. So this one's going to be title and we want that to be text. Then we'll have director. And again, we want that to be text. We're then going to have the date we watched it. So we'll call this one date watched. And again, we'll just have that as text. Then we'll have the actual contents of the review that we write. So again, that will be text. We're then going to have the rating. So this is going to be a number that we give it out of five. So a number of stars, so this will be rating and this will be an integer. We're then going to have a poster so we can add an image to each film. Now, an image will be binary data, so we want it to be a blob. So a blob is for binary data, whether that might be uh, an image or a sound file, something like that. If you want to store binary data in your database, you make a blob field. And finally, we're going to store whether we have watched the film or not. And we'll use an integer to do this. There isn't a Boolean type here. So we'll just use zero for false, one for true. So this is because we want to be able to add films that we've watched, but also create a list of films that we want to watch. So watch will just tell us whether we've actually watched this film or not. So that's all the fields we want. And you can see this is, this is the SQL statement that will actually create that table in our database. We just click OK and now we can come back to our browser and you can see here that now we have a table called film and these are all the fields that we've added and if we go to browse data you can see that this is all the data in our table but of course we don't have anything in there yet. Now we'll use this on and off um, throughout the lesson just so that we can have a look here and see that things we've added or edited in the database actually show up here as well. So that's our database, complete and ready to be worked with. Okay, great. So that's the end of the first video, which just shows you how to create a simple SQLite database with a single table. Now we don't have any questions in the chat at the moment, so we'll just move straight on to the next section, which is actually connecting your live code stack to the database that you've created. So now that we've created our database, we want to be able to connect to it. So we're going to start with our partially completed uh, live code stack. So start up live code and open up the rated stack. OK, 
Okay, so here we have our partially completed stack. Now the first thing we want to do is connect to the database. And we're going to do this when we open up the stack. So we're going to open the stack script. And in pre-open stack, we're going to connect to the database. Now you'll see there's already a little bit of code in here. All it does is set the full screen mode of the stack and ensure that the first item in the navigation bar is selected when the stack is opened. Now after we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to call a command database connect, which will connect us to our database. Now below that, we're going to actually define our database connect command. So it's a command database connect. And what this will do is this will connect to our database and it'll give us back a numerical database connection ID. Now we need a place to store that. So also declare a script local variable at the top of your script and we're going to call this S database connection. Now to connect to an SQLite database, all you need is the full path to the SQLite file. So we're going to create a local variable T database path and then we're going to construct the full path to that file so that we can connect to the database. So it'll be one path on mobile and one path on desktop. So first we check the environment. So if we're on mobile, our database will be in the documents folder for the app. So it'll be in special folder path documents. And then just the name of the database file, which is rateit.db. And we'll put that into our variable. Now, if we're on desktop, the database is just next to our stacks. So we'll set the item delimiter to slash. And then we'll put item one to minus two of the file name of this stack, which will give us the path to the folder that the stack and the database are in. And then we'll add the database, uh, the name of the database file on the end. Okay, so now we've got the path, whether we're on mobile or on desktop. What we need to do now is we need to connect to the database and we do this using the rev open database function. And we give it the database type, which is SQLite. And we give it the path to the database file. And what this will do, this, this will return us a numerical connection ID, which we can then store in our script local variable. So we just put that into S database connection. Now, if the database connection has been successful, then it'll be a number. Other, and if it's not been successful, then it'll be an error message. So what we can do is we can just check if it's been successful. So what we can do is we can say, if S database connection is not a number, so if it's not a number, we know something has gone wrong, then we can just display a dialog to the user to let them know that there's been a problem. So we can say answer, error, and then we can just pass the database connection, which will actually hold the error that's been returned from the database driver. Okay, so now we can connect to our database and we've got that database connection ID stored. Now we need to use that ID anytime we want to communicate with the database, when we want to add records, query the database, anything like that. Now, in order to make sure that that database connection is always available, rather than just directly using the value in uh, the variable here, we'll actually use a function which will allow us to check if the connection is still open, if not, reconnect to the database, otherwise just return the connection. So we'll add that here and we'll call it database ID. So it's a function, database ID. And what this will do is first, it'll check to see if the value that we have stored is still an open database connection. So what we can do is we can say if S database connection is not among the items of rev open databases, then so what this is doing, the rev open databases function returns a list, a comma separated list of all the open database connections. So we're checking to see if our database connection is in that list. If it's not, then we want to reconnect. So we call database connect, which will reconnect and update S database connection. And then we can just return S database connection. Now, if S database connection is among the items of rev open databases, then we know that that connection is still open. So we can return it directly without having 
to reconnect to the database. And this just ensures that we always have a valid open connection when we want to work with our database. Now, the final thing we need to do is make sure that our database is writable on mobile. So on desktop, it's fine. We know it'll be in a writable location, but on mobile, we need to make sure that it's in the documents folder for the app so that it can be written to. Now, the way it'll work is that we'll include an empty database when we build our standalone, and that will be in the resources folder. But the resources folder is not writable. So in order to be able to write to the database, we need to move it into the documents folder. So in our pre-open stack, before we connect to the database, we want to make sure that that file is in a writable location. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get the path to the database. So we'll just copy this from here. So we'll have local T database path. And then we'll say if the environment is mobile, then we want to build the path to our uh, database, which is in the documents folder. So we've got our path. Now we want to check that that file exists. So if the app has been opened up before, then the, that file should already exist in the documents folder. If not, we need to create it. So we'll say if there is not a file, T database path, then, so what we're doing is we're checking to see that the file exists in the documents folder. If it doesn't, then this is maybe the first time you've, uh, you've run the app. So what we want to do is we want to copy the empty database from the resources folder into the documents folder. So we say put URL, and it's a binary file, a database file is a binary file, so it's bin file. And then we want to copy it from the resources folder, so from special folder path resources. And we want to put it into the documents folder. So what we're doing is we're copying the rate it database from the resources folder into URL, again, into a bin file. And this time we're copying it into that database path that we worked out earlier. And then once all that's done, we can just connect to the database. So this just ensures that on mobile, our database is in a writable location. Okay, so that is showing us how to connect to the database that we previously created from within live code. So again, we don't have any questions in the chat at the moment. Um, there was a question from Frank who asked about Airtable and whether you could use that with live code. Uh, I'm not actually familiar with Airtable. Um, as long as it's got an API that you can that you can use, you'll be able to use it with a live code stack. The reason that I chose SQL Lite as an example for this lesson is that it's free and the support comes as standard with live code. So out of the box, you can use SQL Lite databases with live code. Um, so if you do have any questions, just pop them in the chat and we'll try and answer them in the little Q&A sessions in between videos. But in the meantime, I will just queue up the next video for us. So the next video will be um, actually showing us how to add a film to the database. So now that we've connected to the database, we want to be able to start adding things to it from live code. So now that we're connected to our database, we want to be able to add a film. Now there's two types of films we can add. We can add films that we've watched and reviewed, and there's films that we want to watch. So films that we're going to put in our watch list. Now we're going to start by adding a film that we want to review. So make sure you're on the first card. So this is the recent card. Go into uh, edit mode and select the header. Then go to the object menu and open up the object script for the header. Now you'll see this already has some code in here. So it checks to see where the user has clicked in the header. And if they've clicked inside the add action, then it's already got in here, visual effect, push left fast, go to card, add edit film. So this will already move us to the add or edit card film. But before we do that, we need to tell that card what type of film we want to add. So because we're on the recent reviews card here we want to tell it that we're that we're adding a review so we're adding a review for a film we've watched so we'll set the C watched of card add edit film to one so that one represents true so we're setting the C watched of card add edit film to true and we want to tell it that we're adding a film rather than editing a film 
So as well as setting the C watched of the card to 1, we want to set the C add edit mode of the card to add. So we're telling it that we're adding a film rather than editing a film. So click apply. Let's just make sure that, that works. We'll switch to run mode. We'll click on the add and it will take us to the edit film card here. Now there's already quite a lot of code in this card but we'll just have a quick look at it. So if I open up the card script, we go to pre-open card. So what it does is if we're on mobile, it'll delete any mobile controls, it'll hide these standard fields. This is our title, director, date watched and review. This is our rating widget. This has actually been built from a segmented control widget. If you want to see how to make a rating widget from the segmented control, then there's a blog post on that. And then we've got an image here where we can choose a poster. Now, because we want this to work well on mobile, instead of just using these standard fields like we do on the desktop, then we want to create native um, entry controls. So we create a title entry, a director entry, and then we check to see if this is a watched film. If so, we create a date watched entry and a review entry. If not, then we don't. So if we haven't seen a film, we don't want to review it yet. So we hide those. And similarly, if we're on desktop, we always show the title and the director. If it's a review, we show date watched, review and rating, and otherwise we hide those. Now, as well as that, we've got some code in that mean that when you go um, to a field and click inside it, and this also works on mobile, if it has the default text, so the default text enter title, if you click in the field and it's got the default text in it, it'll clear the field ready for you to type. If it's got anything else in it, then it won't. If you empty the field, it'll put back the default text. If you want to see how this all works, it's all in the card script for this card. And um, there's just quite a lot in there, so we wouldn't have had time to set it up all together. Okay, so what this does is it sets up everything and then it clears the form, so it just makes sh sure that these are all empty. Now what we want to do is we want to allow the user to put the details in here and then we want them to be able to save the film by clicking on the save action here. So we'll go into edit mode, select the header and open up the object script. Now again this already has um, some code in here where it checks what the action name is. If it's delete then it calls delete film, if it's save then it calls save film, if it's back then it goes to the most recent card so it goes back to your list card. And what we're going to do is we're going to implement the save film command. So come back to the card script, go down to the bottom under everything that's already in there and add the command save film. Now what we're going to do in here is we're going to build an array so we'll call that T values and this will hold all the values in these entry controls. So the title, the director, the date watched, the rating, the review and the poster image. And in this card already we have a little function that um, returns the value of each of these controls. So we're going to use this. So you can see here if it's title, director, date watched or review then checks the um, the environment and returns the text in the field or the entry control. If it's poster it gets the image data and if it's rating then it gets the maximum of the highlighted items. So here the highlighted items are a list, one, two, three, so we just get the maximum to see how many stars it is. So we'll use that and we'll do that for each of the values that we want to get. So we'll put get value title and we'll put that into T values one. And the reason that we're using a numerically keyed array, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is that we'll use, this is what we need when we come to actually um, insert this into the database. So just because of the way we're going to write our database insert commands, we want these to be numerically keyed. Now we'll do that for the others. Okay, so we've got seven values. We've got the title, director, rating, date, watched, and review, and they're all fine. They're just sort of standard text or numerical values. Now the poster is a bit different. The poster will is image data. So because it's image data, and if you remember when we created our database, that was a blob field. So because it's binary data, we have to put star B before the element key. 
So that's just so that when we come to insert it into the database, um, we build our SQL statement and the database knows that it's expecting binary data. And then finally, we want to set the watched value. And we don't have a watched entry control on here, so we're using the C watched of the card, which if you remember, we set that on the header of whichever list we came from. So that's now our array of all the values that we want to add to the database. And then what we'll call, what we'll do is we'll call the command database add film and we'll pass it the values array as a parameter. Now when that has been done, so when the command has executed and the value, the film has been inserted into the database, we want to check the results. We say if the result is a number. So the result will always be a number if it's been successful. If it's not a number, you know it's an error. So if the result is a number, what we want to do is we want to go back to the card we were previously on. So we do visual effect push right fast and then we just go recent. A recent is really useful because it will just go back to the card you were on previously. So because we can get to this edit card from the recent list, the all reviews list and the watch list, we just want to go back to whichever one we came here from. So we just do go recent and that will take us back to the card we were on previously. Otherwise, so if the result is not a number, then we know there's a problem. So we can answer error and we can show the user the result. So hopefully this won't ever happen, but we'll just put this in here just as an extra double check. And I've missed an ampersand there. Let's apply. And now we've got no errors. So when we save the film, we get all the values, we put them into an array, we call database add film, which we'll come to in a second, and that will actually insert this into the database. We check the result. If the result's a number, then the film's been successfully um, entered. So we go back to the previous card. Otherwise we show the error to the user. So now what we need to do is we need to implement our database add film command and we'll do this on our stack script. Let's go to the object menu and open up the stack script and after our function database id we'll add the command database add film and it gets one parameter p values. Now, in order to insert our film into the database, we need to get the connection ID and we need to build the SQL statement that will actually insert our film. So we'll have local T connection ID and T SQL. So this is where we'll build our SQL statement. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get our database D and we'll put it into T connection ID. So we'll use that function that we implemented earlier, database ID. And we'll put that into T connection ID. And then what we need to do is we need to build our SQL statement. Now, again, I'm not going to go into this in too much detail, but you can always look it up. So to add a new record, you always start with insert. So you're inserting a record into the database and we tell it what table we want to insert it into. Now our database only has one table film, um, but we still want to specify which table it is. So we're inserting a record into the film table. Then after that we want to give the list of all the fields that we want to put values into. Now this is useful because you don't always want to update all the fields, you might just want to update one of the fields. In our case we want to update all the fields. And then close the bracket, I'll just stretch this out a bit so we can see a bit more of it. So we're inserting, we're inserting into the film table all these fields, title, director, rating, date, watched, review, poster, and watched. And then we tell it that we're going to use the values. And in this case, we're using placeholder values because we've got an array of values here. We want to um, use the values from that array in our statement. So again, we have a bracket. And what we want to do is we want to put the value from the array. So we want to put value one, which is the title into title, then colon two, which is value two, and then we have value seven. So the way that placeholders work 
is that when this SQL statement is executed, colon 1 will be replaced by the value in array key 1, colon 2 will be replaced with the value in array key 2, etc. So we put all that into TSQL. And now what we want to do is we want to actually execute that statement on our database. And we do that using rev execute SQL. And we pass that the connection ID, the SQL statement, and the list of values, which is p-values. And in this particular case, it's important to put the name of the array inside quotes here. Now, for more information on this, um, I would recommend having a look at the dictionary entry for rev execute SQL. And that'll explain a bit more about placeholders and how to use them. Uh, they're particularly useful if you're using things like uh, binary data. Um, if you wanted to, you could construct um, your SQL statement just using string concatenation. So this would all be the same. And then you'd have values, and then you'd have the bracket, and then you'd have um, a single quotation, and then you'd have p-values 1 or the title value. You could have passed all the values um, as individual parameters as well. So you could build this all using string concatenation, but using placeholders when you've got lots of, um, lots of values that you want to add is a bit easier. And because of the binary data, um, if you try and use string concatenation to do that, it wouldn't necessarily work because there can be return characters and commas and things inside that binary data. So if you're using binary data, you want to use placeholders when you are doing your SQL. And like I say, that's all documented in the dictionary. Okay, so let's apply that. Let's move this out of the way and let's try adding a film. So I'm gonna go into run mode. I'm gonna come back to the card just so I can go through the whole process. Let's add a film. Uh, a film I've seen recently is Dunkirk. The director is Christopher Nolan. I watched it on the 28th of July this year. I'm going to give it five stars. I'm going to choose the poster here. So I've got uh, the posters on my desktop. There's the poster and there's the review. I'll just say excellent. We click on save. And so that seems to have worked because it has returned us to the recent reviews card, which is where we started. Now let's have a look at our database in the SQLite browser. And if we go to browse data, we can see that our film has in fact been inserted. So there's our title, director, date watched, the review, rating, there's our poster data, which you can't really see in here because it's binary data and the value of watched is one because we have seen it. So we can see that the, database, the film has been successfully inserted into the database. Now, what we want to do is we just want to make sure that that works from the reviews and the watch list card as well. So I'm going to open up the object script here and I'm just going to copy those custom properties that we set. Now I'll move to the reviews card and I'll add that in here as well. So just before we go to the card, we want to set those values. And I want to do it on the watch list. Now there is a slight difference in this one, which is that we want to set the C watched of this one to zero. Because this is our watch list, this is where we add films that we want to watch. So it has not been watched yet, so we set the C watched to zero for false, but we still want the add or edit mode to be add. And if we quickly check that one, move into run mode, we're on the watch list. If we click add, you'll see that only the title, director and image are chosen. Because we haven't seen the film, we can't review it yet. Okay, so that shows us how to actually start adding records into our database. So um, again, we don't have any questions, do pop them in the chat if you've got any, but we'll just move straight on to the next video, which is actually going to show us how to uh, query the database so that we can use the information in the database and display it in our live code stack. So I'll just get that queued up now. So now that we've got a film in our database, we want to show it 
on our list view. So we're going to start with the all reviews list. So go into the run mode and make sure you're on the all reviews card and open up the card script. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a pre-open card handler here. And then here what we'll do is we will uh, query the database for all the reviews and then we'll show them in the field that we have here. So this field is called film list. So we'll start with a local variable t all films and then we'll call a function uh, on the stack script so we'll put database get and we want all the reviews so get all reviews and we'll put that into t all films and then we'll set the text of field film list to t all films and now we'll go to the stack script and we'll implement our database get all reviews function. So we'll come down to the bottom, we'll declare the function database get all reviews. And as before, we want the connection ID. And then we'll construct an SQL statement to query the database for those reviews. We'll use our function to get the connection ID and then we'll build our SQL statement. So in this case what we want to show in our field is we want to show the title, the rating out of five, the date that was watched and we also want the ID. Now the ID will be off screen so it'll be over here outside the scope of the field so we won't actually, the user won't be able to see it but because that's what we use to uniquely identify the film we want it to be included in the list so that when we select one we can use that ID. So to do that we build our SQL statement so what we want to do is we want to select fields from the database and we're going to select the title, rating, date watched and ID field so this is the order that these will be returned to us in so we're selecting all of those from the table film and we only want films that we've already seen so we'll say where watched equals one and we want to order those by title so that'll just put these into alphabetical order so this is our SQL statement so we're selecting the title the rating the date watched and the ID from the film table where watched is one, so where the film's been watched, and we're putting them into order by title. So we put that into TSQL, so that's our SQL statement. And this time, rather than insert it, because when we inserted the film into the database, we executed the SQL, this time we actually want to get some information back from the database. So we're going to use the rev data from query function, so that's asking the database to give us back information. So we'll put rev data from query and in this case what we need to do is we want to tell it how the f we want the fields to be separated so we want them separated by tab if there was more than one record we want those to be separated by return so it'll be one record per line with the fields separated by tabs then we give it the connection ID and the SQL statement and we'll put that into a variable called tfilms and then we'll return tfilms let me just declare tfilms up here as well so let's apply that so when this is run what will happen is that the database will return the title rating date watched and id from the film table where the film has been watched each row in the data that's returned will be one film and the field so the title rating date watch etc will be separated by tabs so we can then put it directly into our field okay so let's try that out now so if we go away from the card and then come back to it you'll see that that film that we added to the database is now showing up here because it's being selected from the database if we had more than one we'd have one per line Okay, so now we want to do the same thing for the recent films and the watch list so let's do recent first so switch to the recent card and open up the card script and just to save time I'm going to copy from here 
But here, instead of requesting all the reviews, we're only going to request the recent reviews. So this card will show the 10 most recent reviews that we have added to the database. So we'll come back to the stack script and we'll add the function database get recent reviews. Now this will be very similar, it'll just be that our SQL statement is slightly different. So again we want to select the title, the rating, the date watched and the ID from film where watched equals 1. But instead of doing order by title, but in this case we'll order by date watched and we only want 10 so we'll put on a limit of 10. And again we'll run our query, we'll get back tab and return separated data and we'll return the list of films. Now let's test that. So if we go to reviews, there's all our reviews and there's our recent reviews. Now because we've only got one, it will always show up in recent and all reviews and it will always be the top of the list because we've only got one. But as you add more films, you'll see that this is limited to 10. This has all of them. These will be sorted by title and these will be sorted by date. And finally, we want to do our watch list. So again, I'm just going to copy our pre-open card here. But this time we want to get the watch list and on the stack we'll have a function database get watch list and again very similar just changing the SQL so that we get different values back. So in this case we'll just select title and ID because we won't have um, a rating or a date watched because we haven't seen these films yet. Watch will be zero because they haven't been seen and we will again order by title. So in this case we're just getting the title and the ID from the film table where watch is zero and we'll order it by title. So if we come back here and switch there won't be any in the watch list at the moment because we haven't added any films to our watch list but if we want to do that now so as before we've just got the title and the director this time so a film that I want to see it's called A Ghost Story and it's by, directed by David Lowry and I've got the poster here. So now I can save that. It'll take me back to the watch list and there it appears in our watch list. So now we can switch between the lists and you'll see that they're actually different. We've got our watch list and we've got our reviews. Okay, so welcome back again. Again, we have no questions, so we don't need to do anything in our little Q&A session. And um, we're not going to get through all the videos, but I'll queue up the next one, which shows us how to view the details of a film. And then probably at the end, we'll skip on to the building a standalone one, just so that we can um, show that as the last one. The two in between to show you how to delete things from the database and edit things in the database. And um, so you can always watch those in your own time when the links get shared later. I'll just start up the next one, which shows us how to retrieve the actual details about a film and display it in the stack. Okay, so now we can see all the films that are in our database. We also want to be able to select one and view its details. So we're going to start from the recent card. So make sure you're on the recent card, go into edit mode, select the field itself, and open up the object script. Now in here you'll see there's already a mouse down handler and all that does is change the uh, text color of the field that's clicked on. It's just to do with the way that I designed um, this app. I wanted the text to change color rather than the whole line to be highlighted. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a mouse up handler which will actually, um, so the color changes when you do mouse down, you actually want to go to the add edit card and display all the film details when you get mouse up. So I've got it um, actually saved here so I'm just going to paste it in and then we'll see what it does. So firstly it gets the text that is selected. So it puts line, the highlighted line of me, so the highlighted line of me is the line number of the highlighted line but we want the actual content so we put line one of me into T selection and that will give us all the details that are shown in the field. If I just open up the uh, property inspector, you'll see we've got the title, the rating, the date, and this is the ID of the film. 
So we've got item 1, item 2, item 3 and item 4. So we set the item delimiter to tab so that we can get each item um, individually. And then we set up the add edit film card which is the one that we'll use to display all the details. So we set the see watched of the card to 1. So just like when we clicked add here we want to set the see watched of the card because we're on the recent list we know it's been watched. Then we set the ID, the CID of card add edit film to item 4 of T selection. So if you remember item 4 here is the ID of the film and because that's our unique identifier we want to know the ID of the film that's been selected so we can display its details. And then we set the C add edit mode of the card to edit. So if you remember when we added we set it to add and here we want to set it to edit. And this is just so that when we get to that card when we click on save it does one thing for adding and one thing for editing. And then we use our visual effect and we go to the card. So if I switch to run mode, so if I click down you'll see that the text changes colour and then when I click up it takes me to the add or edit film card. Now we need to make some changes to this card to um, do a different thing depending on the mode we're in. So we're now in edit mode whereas we were in add mode before. So open up the card script and we, firstly we need to update the pre-open card handler. So if we come down to the end you'll see that we always clear the form. Now what we want to do is we want to do we want to clear the form if we're adding but we want to update the form with the film details if we're editing. So what we want to do here is we want to say if the C add edit mode of me is add then we want to clear the form L so if it's edit what we want to do is we want to populate the form so we're going to call the populate form command here and then end if. Clear form will delete all the details and set it back for a new uh, for a new film and populate form will actually retrieve the details from the database and update the form with those details. Now as well as that we're going to update the header here. So if we're adding we want to set the label of widget header to add film and if we're editing we want to set the label to edit film just so it's a bit clearer to the user that they're on the right card. So now if we have a look at the populate form handler which is actually already um, been implemented because again it's quite long. The important thing here is that we again request these details from the database by calling the database get film details function and we pass it the ID. So here we put the CID of this card into TID and then we pass that ID to um, this function and it returns us an array with all the information about the film that we retrieved from the database. So then what we do is we check what, mo what environment we're in and then we go through all the controls and we set the contents of the controls to the value in the details array. So for example we, if we're on mobile we use mobile control set to set the text of the title control to whatever is in T details title do the same for director date watched and review and if we're on desktop we just put it directly into the field then when we get down here to look at the rating we update our segmented control here so we set the highlighted items uh, rating widget depending on what value is in the database and then for the poster we just set the image data of our poster image here to what's returned from the database and if there is no data in the poster uh, field then we show the field poster label. So that's this field here which says choose image. So if there's no image we show the choose image label, if there is an image we show the actual image. So that's our populate form. So the important thing here is that we need to implement our database get film details function on our stack script. So we'll open up stack script just after our other database functions. This time we're doing function database get film details and it's got one parameter, the PID of the film. Now again, this is a long one, so I'm just gonna actually paste it in and then we'll have a look at what it does. So we've got our ID here, that's the ID of our film. We need our connection ID, our SQL statement, and we want to store the result. We build the T details array and also we have a record ID. 
So we get the database ID, we build our statement, so we're selecting star, which means everything, from film, where ID equals PID. So we're saying select all the fields from the film table, where the ID is the ID of the movie. And this time we're using rev query database. So if you remember before, we used rev data from query. Now rev data from query returns us um, a string. So in this case, it returns us a tab and return separated string with just all the text from the database in it. This time, what we get is we actually get a, a record set ID. So it's uh, just an ID to a record set. So a record set is just a selection of records that match your query. So in this case, we should only get one record back in our record set because our ID is unique. And then what we do is we use this rev database column named function to get the um, details of a particular field from that record. So to get the ID, we use the rev database column named function. We pass it the record set ID, we pass it the name of the field, and we t tell it where we want to put it. So in this case, we want to put it in the ID um, element of the tdetails array. So in our case, we only have one record in our record set, but if you had multiple records, there are functions and commands in uh, live code to move to the first record, then you would do all this, so you'd get all your details, then you'd move to the next record, um, etc. So you can move through, you can move through the records one at a time and get the details, um, and then put them into whatever format you want. In this case, we're putting them into um, into an array, and again, we're doing this because we've got our poster. So remember, our poster is a blob; it's a piece of binary data. So using tabs and returns to separate the separate the elements that wouldn't work because of the binary data. So that's why we're using a record set and we're using these functions and we're putting them into an array. So what we end up with is an array with the ID, the title, the director, the date watch, the review, the rating, the poster and the watched value and then we return that to our add edit film card and then on the add edit film card so we've got our details so now we've called this so we've got our T details array and then we just loop through our array, we get the relevant bit of information and we display it on our card. So again, I'm not going into too much detail here about record sets and things like that. There's lots of information about these and of course you can look them up in the dictionary. Okay, so now let's try it. We'll move into run mode, go back to our list and hopefully now if I select Dunkirk it will populate the field with all the information. So here's our title, our director, the date, the rating, there's our poster, and there's the review that I added. Okay, we are back live again. Are you with us, Eleanor? We're, we're back on, back on the, the live channel. I'm not sure if Eleanor can actually hear us at the moment. Um, I believe that she does have another video to show us. So maybe just stop that. Up. So now we've finished our app, the last stage is to build it into standalone so that we can test it on the iOS simulator or on the desktop, however you want to test it. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we've got an empty database in here. So I've got an empty database here and I've just copied it into my rate it folder. So if I now restart live code, open up the stack, we should have no uh, films in here because we've got a nice empty database now. 
So now what I want to do is I want to open up the standalone application settings. On the general pane I want to check my standalone name and I want to choose select inclusions for the standalone application. In the copy files I want to make sure that I include the empty database, so just add file and choose your empty database. In the inclusions we want to make sure that we selected all the widgets and libraries we need so we've got the header bar, the segmented control because that's what we use to make our star rating, the navigation bar and we also want to make sure that we include SQLite. Now I'm going to test on the iOS simulator so let's go to iOS and this is all fine, don't need to change any of this, there's my internal app ID and I've chosen my icons so those are included in the resources for this lesson, so that's all ready. So now we're ready just to go to the test target, we'll choose iPhone and choose test. So here's our app running on the iOS simulator, you'll see there's no films in there at the moment, so let's try adding one and we'll just add Dunkirk again and the director. And let's just save it like that and there it appears in our list and we can select it and it will bring us back and show the details again. Okay, so that's the end of this app. Now there's lots of things that you could do to uh, add more features to this app. You could add more fields to the database, you could add the ability to search your reviews, uh, you could mark movies on your watch list as seen, you could add an option. So when you go into the details here you could mark it as seen. Um, you can make multiple lists to categorise movies, share your reviews on social media, or you could make use of a web service such as OMDB to retrieve movie data. So you can make use of a web service that allows you to type in a field and then it gives you back all this information about the director, um, the poster, things like that. So there's lots you could do uh, to take uh, an app like this to the next level. But hopefully um, just seeing how you can set up an SQLite database, how you can add things, query it, uh, delete and edit the database will be useful in your apps in the future. Okay, hey, thanks for um, stepping in there, Heather. That's <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank goodness for videos. I'm glad that played smoothly. Unfortunately, um, Chrome stopped working, so I had to come back into the room again. Okay, so I hope everybody found that interesting and useful. Like I said, there's a couple of videos that we didn't get to, but they'll be made available later. And if you've got any questions that um, come up later on, uh, drop them in the Slack channel and we can um, answer them there. And apart from that, I will see you back here next month for Shake It, where we'll be using uh, mobile sensors to create an app that will actually re react when you do things with your phone. So thanks, everybody. And thanks, Heather. Okay, thanks. That sounds great, Eleanor. So yeah, head over to Slack if you want to talk uh, to ask questions from Eleanor. I'm going to close this down now and we start for the next session. So don't forget to check your email for your rejoining links and come back and we're going to have the flash talks next week. That's going to be really very interesting from Carlos Manzo and Stephen's going to be talking to you. So goodbye for now and see you in a moment. <laughs>